What's up everybody and today we are reacting to a video called Call of Duty Zombies Oversimplified. This is by Tim Hansen. Um, I've not seen this channel before, I've not seen this video before. As you know, I'm just starting to get into Call of Duty Zombies. I've played all the Call of Duty games, used my military experience as a former Orange Commando to kind of talk about them storylines and compare and contrast to real life events, etc, etc. And now we're diving into the fictional zombie universe and I'm just intrigued. I don't really understand it. Uh, if you didn't see already, I played the first map of World at War the other day on the channel. Um, check that out if you haven't already. Um, and that, I just want, I want to kind of understand what the story is all about because I didn't, there was no story in the world at War 1 and everyone's telling me that there's a really cool story and I need to know more about it. So I found this video, Call of Duty Zombies Oversimplified by Tim Hansen. I will leave a link down below to the original video. Go over to his channel, like the video, subscribe to his channel and all that lot because that's really important that you do that uh, because we are learning from his videos. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to find out. It's oversimplified. If there's anything that he misses out in this and you want me to know about and there's video referencing it, let me know by um, sharing it me in the comments section down below. What else? What else? What else? What else? Question of the day comes from Taho Taho's Limit. I apologize if I get that wrong. I always get that wrong. Though. I always get the people's names wrong. It says, question. If you could experience one thing in your life for the first time again, what would it be? Well, the first thing that pops to my head is finding out that I was going to be a dad. Is like that feeling was unbelievable. Uh, there's loads there's been lots of events in my life that have been genuinely life-changing like getting my green beret as a teenager uh, becoming a father getting married moving to this the united states like all these different things uh but the first thing that popped to my head was being a dad was simply being a dad um finding out i was going to be a dad watching the birth of my two children um was genuinely life-changing and i i still think that when you do have children it literally changes the structure of your brain somehow i don't know how but it does um and obviously that moment where i finished the 30 miler and got my green beret was definitely up there as well but being a dad was definitely number one in my opinion so thank you for your question if you've got a question leave it in the comment section down below and we'll get to it in the next video but for now let's shut up let's check this video out let's see what it's all about and it's not there there it is and we'll uh, find out more about the story, Are shall we? Are you tired of not being able to understand the zombie storyline? Are you tired of watching those hour-long explanation videos and leaving with a migraine and swollen testicles? Well, I gotta try my best to simplify it. Okay, I have not been in the game long enough to be that stressed about it, but um, I'm definitely uh, gonna find out why people are getting stressed, I'm sure. Over simplify it you won't leave this video with every detail but hopefully you will leave with the general grasp of it all this is what is this zombie game zombie storyline oversimplified is that like black ops zombies or something that wasn't world at war by any means <laughs> Okay. Ever heard of the multiverse theory? It Correct. states that there are an infinite number of universes out there, some yeah. similar to ours and some not. Some universes have minor differences. There's a universe out there that's exactly like ours, but you forgot to shower last Wednesday. There are some universes <laughs> with major differences too. There's a universe where we have four legs. Basically, anything that can be is. This is why the zombie storyline can get tricky because it's dealing with multiple dimensions and universes. Uh, ah, okay. Minute, while I explain this great war everyone's raving about. In the beginning of time, there were only the Keepers. The Keepers created the summoning key and mastered multiverse travel because they're smart and bored. Oh, and also created a Gartha. Holy shit, I have so many questions already. What's a Gartha? It's a perfect dimension. What's Ether? It's the fabric of our universe. What's the summoning key? It's a tool used to manipulate Ether. It basically can't not do anything. While vacation. All right, there's already so much information that I'm just like, what's going on? Okay, I'm going to try my best, guys. I'm going to try my best. Some keepers stumbled upon the Dark Ether containing element 115. These keepers were corrupted by the Dark Ether and created a pyramid. The keepers were now divided into two factions. Okay. Corrupted, led by the Shadow Man, and uncorrupted, led by Dr. Monty. Following some awkward Thanksgivings, the corrupted and... This is the zombie game? What? I thought it was just zombies. I thought it was just a military person fighting zombies. What? Why is there ultimate dimen alternate dimensions and there's like all these different things that are look all these animals? These are not zombies. What's going on? Uncorrupted keepers realize that they don't get along so well anymore, and the war commences. Monty wins, and the defeated corrupted keepers are banished to the dark ether, and their pyramid is hidden on our moon because humans will never reach the moon. Right? Over eons, <laughs> the corrupted keepers gradually morph into the apothecons and send element 115 meteors to Earth because they're dicks and they want humanity to crumble. The apothecons are eventually freed from the dark ether, and the keepers team up with humanity to defend Earth. 
four humans in particular wielding epic stabs save Earth and defeat the Apothegans once again. These four are known as Primus. What happens to just simple military man shoots a zombie? What is going on? We're going into super sci-fi fantasy right here. Guys, okay. If you don't if you don't watch this channel long enough, right? I'm obsessed with fantasy. Obsessed. I'm obviously this channel's all military and there's a bit of horror here and there. And I concentrate on military because of my military background, but I'm obsessed with the fantasy genre. So much so that I actually just started a new channel called The Sword and Scabbard. Link down below, go and check it out. I read so many fantasy books. I watch TV shows, sci-fi, everything. I'm just super, super into fantasy and sci-fi. Mostly fantasy, a little bit more uh, sci-fi when I'm, you know, when I've not got much fantasy to read. Uh, I'm talking all sorts from like Brandon Sanderson to 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 George R. R. Martin to Lord of the Rings with Tolkien and even more that you like draw up a comic. All all these weird stuff that you probably haven't heard about. And also. Um, I love reading books like Dune and stuff like that. So anything wacky and crazy ideas I'm obsessed with. I genuinely opened this video thinking that it was just going to be, this is how a zombie was created and this is how they're ultimately going to defeat it. We've got a full sci-fi fantasy here. I love it. I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, nobody documents the Great War and all is forgotten. Makes sense, right? Well, this is where it gets confusing. This is where we split into two different stories. There's this dimension where history is undocumented, and there's another where a dude named Pablo does document the Great War. We'll call the undocumented dimension the original dimension, and the documented dimension the new dimension. For now, we'll talk about the original dimension, the one in which the Great War had been forgotten. Element 115 is finally unearthed in the late 1800s in the American West, formerly known as Buried. A resident of the town created one of three pieces to the Agarthan device. What's the Agarthan device? It shapes our reality. What else would it do? The Agarthan device requires three <laughs> pieces. This guy's pretty funny. I like him. Skull device, blood of a dead elder god. I don't know. And an elemental shard. Keep tabs on these three items. It's important to piece this Agarthan device together for the end. Okay. So far, we've got the real device and buried. Fast forward to World War II. <laughs> Element 115 is unearthed by a group of German scientists called Group 935. They want to use Element 115 to create wonder weapons and super soldiers for the war. The Germans aren't the only ones who have discovered the element, however. The Japanese find some and create a similar group known as Division 9 and create the Rising Sun facility upon the Element 115 meteor, formerly known as Shinonuma. Uh-oh, looks like those pesky Americans found Element 115 in their backyard too. Check out Groom Lake, Nevada. Group 935... Okay, okay. We're three minutes and 18 seconds into this, right? I've learned that zombies in Call of Duty isn't just zombies. There's a whole another dimension. There's, in fact, there's multiple dimensions of all these different things. I am so sold on this now already. I want to play them all. I legit want to play them all. Can somebody in... My, some of my loyal viewers, and I'm sure someone's already done this, but I haven't seen it yet. I need a list of each Call of Duty game in order to get this story correct for me to play. Because when I was looking at Zombies for World at War, it also popped up with black ops 3 where it was like a separate zombie game but it had maps from the original world at war like where do i need to start can i just get that one with all the maps or do i need to start with world at war like can somebody lay it all down for me i, I would really appreciate it because i need this story in my life this sounds fantastic led by dr maxis and dr richtoff and begin experimenting with teleportation at the Duris facility while doing so they accidentally create the first zombie Maxis turns his attention away from teleportation and towards developing wonder weapons. Unfortunately, Group 935's finances are tight. Fortunately, the Nazis exist and exchange money for wonder weapons. Behind Maxis' back, Richthofen and Dr. Schuster continue their work on teleportation. Richthofen accidentally teleports himself to the moon and discovers the Dark Ether Pyramid. What? The Job Keepers. We're going to call this pyramid the MPD. Richthofen is electrocuted when he touches it and begins to hear voices in his head from the Dark Ether, telling him to open it up. Richthofen gradually loses his sanity. He tells Schuster of the MPD, and the two begin secretly building Griffin Station on the moon. What? Five begin to expand and establish facilities in multiple new locations, including a mental institution, formerly known as Verucht, an abandoned theater, formerly known as Kinur Toten, the Tunguska River in Siberia, and a medieval castle, formerly known as Dreisendrak. While Schuster and Dr. Groff are exploring the MPD. Wait, so there's a zombie map where you're on the moon? 
Am I getting that correct? They discover the MPD requires living souls and begin sacrificing people to charge it. Group 935 obtains the Brill device from Buried and sends it to the Tunguska facility. The MPD is now charged and Richtofen's plan to erase Maxis and control Ether begins. Richtofen teleports Maxis to the crazy place in Samantha to the moon. She runs into the MPD and becomes what? corrupted by the dark Ether, which is a boner because Richtofen is supposed to do that, not this bitch. Samantha, now in control of the zombies and Ether, sends waves of zombies at Richtofen to stop him and avenge Maxis. Now, it's time for our beloved Ultimus crew to step in. Taki Omasaki, Nikolai Belensky, and Tank Dempsey are awoken, having previously been captured as test subjects. The four of them teleport to Shinonuma. I haven't seen anything yet about World at War maps. <laughs> Does the story start after World at War? to obtain Richtofen's diary, then back to Darius. Richtofen accidentally overloads the teleporter and are sent far into the future to Kino der Toten. We're in the 60s now. If you know anything about the 60s, you know that the Soviets and Americans never got along and argued over Group 935 stuff after disbanding. The Soviets experimented with Element 115 in a Cosmodrome, formerly known as Ascension, and the Americans experimented with Element 115 in Groom Lake, Camp Edward, and the Pentagon. Turns out the Soviets obtained another piece to the Agarthan device, the Blood. How? Also, Dr. Yuri had gone insane and freed Samantha, allowing her to travel into the future with Ultimus, which is why there are zombies in this time period. After their time at Kino der Toten, Ultimus travels- There's so much to this. There's so much to this right now. ...to Ascension. While this occurs, the Pentagon is under attack and the events of five occur. After surviving the outbreak, the Americans create Broken Arrow, an Element 115 research group. Richtofen remembers where the Vril device is and travels to the Tunguska facility. He travels too far into the future, all the way to 2011. Oh, by the way, years ago, when shipping the blood to the Tunguska facility, it came to life and attacked the Group 935 members, causing a zombie outbreak. These events would inspire George Romero's Call of the Dead decades later. Romero films the movie at the Tunguska facility in 2011 when Ultimus shows up. Another outbreak occurs and the celebrity cast retrieves the real device for Richtofen. Ultimus then travels- WHAT?! WHAT?! My brain is turning to mashed potato! <sighs> There's so much to this! To the Himalayas, on Earth, not Mars, you naive conspiracy theorists, formerly known as Shangri-La. To acquire the Focusing Stone, they aren't alone, however. Two British explorers, Brock and Gary, are in search of Agartha. During the eclipse, the two are trapped in a time loop in which they repeatedly die until Ultimus frees them in exchange for the Focusing Stone. Rick Toffin then teleports to the moon to finalize his plan. He combines the real device and Focusing Stone to power the MPD and swap souls with Samantha within it. Rick Toffin wins! Well, not exactly. Maxis is still alive in electronic form. He somehow learned to merge with a computer. Is nobody else baffled by this? Maxis orders the other three to launch missiles at Earth to stop Richtofen from controlling Agartha. Richtofen still has control over the zombies. However, Earth is now in shambles and we head to Camp Edward, formerly known as Nuketown. Ultimus is on hold. <laughs> the CIA and CDC I know Nuketown. I know that place. Fight the outbreak at Nuketown until a missile strikes and kills all but one. Some geek named Marlton who managed to sneak into a bunker. Broken Arrow had disbanded, and four survivors, Marlton Johnson, Abigail Misty Briarton, Samuel Stuhlinger, and Russ Min, formerly known as Victus, all link up at the Hanford Station in Washington on Maxis's command. Maxis wants them to activate three devices for him in order to stop Richtofen. Everything should work out just fine, but Stuhlinger proves to be a wrench in the works. He's able to hear Richtofen through ether due to his consumption of zombie flesh somehow. Richtofen hasn't given up. He urges Stuhlinger to activate the devices in his favor instead. Victus ultimately decides to follow Maxis's plan, however, and ignites the three devices in his favor. One at the Hanford Station, formerly known as Transit. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm starting to get a little lost now. I'm starting to get a little lost. One upon a Chinese skyscraper, formerly known as Die Rise, and one in Buried. Turns out, Maxis is a sly son of a bitch. He was corrupted by the Dark Aether all this time. He punishes Richtofen by zombifying him and traps Samantha in Agartha. Great. That marks the end of this portion. Now it's time to discuss the new dimension, the dimension in which Pablo documents the Great War. And okay. Isn't forgotten. I'm gonna let Plus Johnny tackle this dimension. Please subscribe to him. After okay. Go to his channel. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll leave a link to that one as well. Okay. Witnessing her father's corruption, original Samantha reaches out to Maxis from a different dimension, which we're referring to as the New Dimension, and convinces him to help free her from Agartha. Pablo's documentation of the Great War in this dimension allows Group 935 to form much earlier and begin extracting Element 115 from the Great War Tomb in France, which we see in Origin. Germany's discovery of Element 115 concerned the Allies, and so our new Dempsey, Takio, and Nikolai are sent from their respective countries to investigate. 
and they're younger because this occurs during World War I, not World War II. The Germans accidentally resurrect dead soldiers from the Great War with Element 115, and an outbreak occurs. Having just saved what? New Maxis's brain from his soon-to-be zombified body, Richthofen teams up with the other three to form Primus, and they free Samantha from a guard. Monty erases the original, corrupted Maxis and retains Samantha's soul. Monty then what? places Maxis's brain in a new body, and has a plan to eliminate the Apothecans, requiring the souls of each Primus character. Now buckle up, because this shit is about to get wild. Richtof it's already wild! I have no idea what's going on! Papa <laughs> needs two artifacts to aid him on his journey. The summoning key and the chronorium. What's the chronorium? Well, it's a book that knows all. Maxis brings oh, okay. to Kind the of house. like the book from um, Lovecraft. The Necronomicon. Which is in Agartha, by the way, and tells him of the plan. Richthofen travels to Alcatraz prison and tells the warden to build a laboratory underneath for later use. Then manipulates Victus in the original dimension to retrieve the Cronorium for him, obtain their blood samples, and then stores Victus in stasis device for later use. He what? basically rents them out whenever he wants. Richthofen then reads the Cronorium and learns of several paradoxes that must be set in motion. Mob of the Dead was a thing, by the way, wherein Sal DeLuca, Billy Handsome, Finn O'Leary, and Al Arlington all sentenced to life in Alcatraz, plot to escape via plane, but fail. They blame Al for the poor escape plan and murder him. Then, the other three are sentenced to death and become trapped in purgatory. An endless loop of failed escapes and death. And somewhere along the line, Richthofen obtains blood samples from Finn and Sal as an insurance policy, which will make sense later. Richthofen also found out where the summoning key is. It's in Morgue City, where Shadows of Evil takes place. Unfortunately, the Shadow Man does what he does best and fucks everything up. He manipulates- is the story in the games as confusing as this or is it laid out a bit better am i gonna play all the games and still be like huh i'm still not totally sure what's going on or am i gonna be like oh i get it now let me know in the comments it's four city residents into freeing him in order to atone from their sins and now here come the apothecans after realizing they've been duped they re-trap him and richthofen snatches the summoning key Primus teleports to the original dimension kills Ultimus Richthofen at the Durris facility, which we see in the giant, and extract his soul. They then head to Der Eisendrock to obtain Ultimus Dempsey's soul in a Division 9 facility on a Pacific island where Zetsubo Noshima is to obtain Ultimus Takio's soul. They make a quick pit stop to Alcatraz to grab the Victus blood vials and then head to war-torn Stalingrad to obtain the Ultimus Nikolai soul. Richthofen then sends all the souls to the house and each soul is turned into a physical child. Maxis makes things challenging by accidentally what? freeing the Shadow Man from the summoning key and the Apotheans take over, as seen in Revelation. Primus and Monty team up to defeat the Shadow Man again and save Agartha. Primus consumes all the blood samples to save themselves from being wiped out from existence, and Monty is none too pleased since they've consumed blood from dimensions that no longer exist. He sends them back in time to the Great War, and now we're in an endless cycle, and we've gotta fix it. In a different timeline, the mobsters are in an endless cycle, but can be broken by Al killing the other three. When this happens, the Cronorium pages change, and the Warden traps Primus in between Zetsubo Noshima and Gorod Kroby. Okay, so they're in an endless, endless loop, and he found a way to do it, and that's by basically having that dude go against his friends, and he breaks the loop by destroying their teleporter. Richthofen now has to follow the new Cronorium plans to repair this. He sacrifices himself because for some reason his blood in particular is necessary and wakes post-revelations Richthofen. Plot what? Monty isn't the good guy. He doesn't care about resolving squat. He just wants to control the Aether and Agartha for himself, which I think we all can agree is a dick move. Post-revelations Richthofen puts Nikolai in charge to defeat Monty and save the multiverse. In this dimension, Ultimus is stuck in the Pentagon until Primus comes along to free them for assistance. They travel to Camp Edward, which we see in Alpha Omega, to obtain the Elemental Shard, the third and final piece for the Agarthan device. And it turns out the only way to resolve this confusing mess is to destroy Agartha by using the Agarthan device, which Nikolai must do. Monty kills Maxis after snitching and a vengeful Samantha helps helps Ultimus and Primus win. Unfortunately, however, there is no winning for them. They must die to resolve the multiverse. Richthofen rents Victus out again to complete the Agarthan device in Togger Toten, while Nikolai poisons and kills everyone. Samantha kills Nikolai, and the world is finally free of corruption and chaos. Sam and Eddie can ascend from darkness, while the Aether ceases to be. And it's a happily ever what? after for everyone but our characters. The end. What? What? I don't get it. I still don't get it. There's so much to it. It's so confusing. Guys, please help me in the comment section down below. If I play through the games, right? If I play through them and I like play them in order, am I going to understand both timelines correctly? Or am I still going to need some help? You might have to help me. I'm totally sold on playing it. This sounds right up my alley and I'm very excited to play it. 
but I think I need some help in figuring out how to play it. Okay? I might have to get a squad together or something like that as well because I know that Zombies is a hard game. Let me know in the comment section what you think. There's a link down below to the original video. Go over there, give it a like, subscribe, and all that good stuff that you do that, okay? Members, you're beautiful, you're amazing, I love you, I couldn't do this without you! I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these beautiful people scrolling across, scrolling across the screen right now, so thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I genuinely appreciate it. Genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. Um, link down below to my new channel, The Sword and Scabbard. Check that out. And if you want to see my bus, my school bus that I converted into a home, we did a full tour recently on the original Adventures channel, link down below. Check that out if you want, if you want as well. Um, other than that, I will see you in the next video. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.